Well, how are you today? How's it going? Let's do something useful here today. <clears throat> I was over at a friend helping him the other day, and uh, he thought he would. He's put up a new antenna, and he thought he'd get a jump on things, and uh, you know, install a connectorization and hook his cable up. And he thought he'd waterproof or weatherproof the fitting. And when he wasn't looking, I took a good hard look at it and thought, you know, there's no way in hell this thing is going to survive the weather, at least around here. So, when he wasn't looking, I peeled it all off and redid it. And then before he got a good look at it, we got hoisted mysteriously into the air. You know, it's no sense hurting somebody's feelings. It's no big deal. He just uh, doesn't do too many connectors, so he didn't know. So, let me show you what I do. Now, uh, there's a lot of different ways to do this, and uh, surprisingly, most antennas, you would think the manufacturer would show you how to weatherproof that or seal up the connection. When I'm talking about the connection, I'm talking about where the, uh, where the cable, we'll use this little model here, goes on to the fitting for the antenna. This just happens to be a little dipole here, and this is a PL259. One of the first things you ought to do, really, is before you hook that all up and cover it all up with whatever sort of a you know weather tight enclosure or seal you're gonna make you really gotta test the thing now that may not be possible so uh, really look your connections over good and do some continuity checks of the voltmeter uh, there's no sense going to a lot of work only to have it fail if you can easily do it now that I realize that that's not always possible like on this connector here this would be a no-brainer you're just gonna screw that together there is no reason to put anything on the threads. Um, I know that guys do that. Um, it's kind of a no-no. <clears throat> make sure it's mechanically tight and look it all over. Now, <clears throat> for me, um, what I do is I think of this like I'm shingling a house where you start on the bottom rows and work your way up. Now, this one's going to be especially tough to do because it's kind of got a little pocket up under there. It's not a really great example. And they're probably trying to keep water out, but uh, it'd have been better if they'd have made a skirt that had come down further and hung off there. What's going to happen is water is going to migrate around there and then creep into the threads. So it's going to be a little tough. But we'll do the best we can. Now, like I said, it's kind of like shingling a house. First off, you need at least, um, to weatherproof this, you need at least one one thing. I don't like RTV. Um, most of it, it has kind of a vinegar smell to it, and it can actually be a little bit corrosive. Uh, good, old, good old electrical tape. Um, I use Scotch 33 Plus. I've got it out in literally hundreds of installations, and it has yet to fail on me because of something the tape did. And some of those installations have been up a long time. So, what I do is uh, I start down a little ways, maybe two or three times the distance, and get it on there. And one of the first things I do is I peel that off and don't touch the back with your fingers and trim that back. What that does is it gives you a new fresh piece of tape that just came off the roll and it doesn't have your oily fingerprints all over it and just kind of gently comb it off of there. Get it out there. Then you just start it and get it tacked down and stretch it a little bit. There's no need for you to stretch it out 300 times. Um, just just a little tension and you start walking it around. And usually what I do is I wind it so that it's double overlapping. Now that's actually probably about maybe two thirds, but it's too late now. Now, you just keep kind of gently going around and keeping pressure on it. If you get any wrinkles or anything, back up and straighten them out and start over. This should be, a, try and make this one smooth, continuous um, winding. When you get to a little area, like we're getting into the transition here, you may have to pull a little tighter, but you can do it and it'll it'll mold there and if the transition is too great if you reduce the 
kind of the, the pitch of your winding and sneak up on it a little bit more like I'm doing here, it'll help you out. And there we're just starting the transition. Yeah, we're kind of working our way over and we're just pulling it tight. And you can see here, we're just, just working it up there. And it's still at least 50% overlapping. And we're getting up to the top. Now the top's going to be a bit of a bug on this, but we'll do the best we can. And we're just going to kind of try and pull it and work it in there. <clears throat> then when it comes time to snap it off, I usually snap it off like that and then let it kind of shrink back a little bit and then tie that tail that's left down. <clears throat> now take your hand and you just kind of go the direction that the, the wrap was. doesn't matter right or left handed. It's not going to matter. And look that all over really good. Especially up in there. That's going to be a bear. <clears throat> Okay, so we've got, we went from the bottom to the top like shingles. So what happens is when the water hits this, it runs down and any water that for some bizarre chance it would get in there would would hit the next layer and go out was is the idea. It's just like the shingles on your house. And make sure, and don't, you know, do this on a, on a decent day. If it's too warm out, it, it probably won't hurt it, but if it's too cold out, it might be a bit of a bear. And the tape won't adhere right. <coughs> Good tape is kind of immune to the, uh, to the weather conditions, so go ahead and just cut off another, just cut that off. Those extra pieces, if you're with some... Uh, you know, co-workers or something. If you're working on tandem stuff, you probably have a, have a buddy or two with you in case something happens. Anyway, those little pieces make great fodder to stick on people's backs. Okay. So now I'm going to start at the top, but I'm going to go the other direction. And I'm going to try and tuck that up in there as best I can. And just slowly go the other way and just start stretching it. gradually sneak that down there. When you get to the transition, see that's that's trying to buckle up there. So you just back up, pull it a little tighter. Sometimes it isn't easy. And what can happen here too is sometimes that tape will try and double up. And fold over itself. You just take it off and try and work it down. The second layer is not as critical as the first. The very first layer should really be on there good. <clears throat> and try and keep that stuff from wrinkling up. I know it's it's gonna be tough and it might take a few tries. And don't be afraid to just yank it all off and throw it down and get rid of it and uh, you can kind of use your thumb there as a guide we're just working it down and when you get to the first wrap I don't go over the first wrap it's kind of the first layer and I go ahead and snap that off and then take that little tail and just Push it on there. So you got you got three, two wraps on there now. Up to you. You can do another wrap. Start at the bottom. Work your way up. So there's three layers on there. I know it sounds a bit much, but I've learned this the hard way, and this seems to work for me. Okay. One of the other secrets to the success of this is you shouldn't be able to unscrew this while this is all together. If you can unscrew this or move it around then you haven't done something right and that connection is probably not tight. This stuff is your last, or the, actually it's the last thing you put on but the first line of defense. This is scotch coat. Um, it's kind of a, I don't know what it really is, some sort of a gooey. It's some sort of goo. I don't know. 
it's a coating and you can get it at the electrical supply house and it's pretty stinky and it can be a bit messy anyway you just smear that on there this, this seems to have gotten some issues um, if it sat around and gotten clotty like this seems like it has some this might, you know what that is that stuff on the brush so you can wipe that off with I think that's lacquer or acetone that's the solvent yeah it's stuff on the brush these clots anyway you uh, just you just paint that on and once you put it down don't go over it again because it'll get it'll start to dry and all you're doing is smearing it around and making things worse and you just start painting that on there and keep reloading the little brush and you're doing this outside so you don't get into big trouble and then I go over the end of all the tape with this stuff and you're done it's that quick and then you hurry up and wipe it off here better half's cutting board before she finds out you get your ass kicked into next week. There we go. And what's the phrase? What they know, what they don't know will never hurt them. Anyway, this should have a shiny appearance to it. And go over all the ends. Now you just let that sit out in the sun. Um, when it comes time to scotch coat it, um, don't let the sun beat on that stuff directly before it's really good and dry. Don't don't let it dry too quickly. Give it a chance to soak in. And you can put a second layer of that stuff on there if you want. It's actually it's pretty thin. But you can see that that stuff starts to seal that up pretty quick. And between those, between good quality materials and technique, you will never have a moisture problem. If you let... Uh, if you don't do something, even if you don't follow my suggestion um, or my technique, if moisture gets in there and gets in the coax, hey, it gets in between the braid or it gets in between the center conductor, it's junk. You just got to throw it away. Just cut it up and you might salvage some of it down at the far end if the water doesn't migrate that way. Since it has a braid on it, it can kind of wick that water pretty far. I've seen a couple hundred feet of coax get contaminated and it's amazing how far it is. It was several several tens of foot down the line. Now, the end at the shack end, since it was um, kind of up, helped it stop it a little bit, but basically 200 feet of coax was junk. I think he salvaged maybe, maybe 25 feet and felt comfortable with it. It's not worth fooling with. So, And nowadays, this stuff is darn expensive. And that would work on any connector, though that N connectors or B and C connectors or F connectors or you know any type of outdoor connector. And uh, you know, don't be afraid to put a couple three layers of tape. Don't be afraid to to make a big wad there. I mean, it does you know it's not a beauty contest; it's a uh, battle against the elements contest, and it could cost you you know some money if you don't do it right. Now. Stuff like this, this is this is an end connector that's really an old end connector. This might really be hard to tape over, so you can see that this is starting to uh, dry now. It's still pretty shiny. When these connections get really weather checked, the scotch coat will be the first to take a beating and it'll start to turn kind of white or opaque and it'll start to kind of like check, like checking paint and it'll start to flake off. That's always a good warning for me that it's time to maybe peel all this off and take a good look at it and then redo it. But that takes a few years to have happen. You gotta at least look at your, you know, connections at least once a year. And that's for you to decide when to do that. You know, you can either tempt fate, look at it after the winter, or you can maybe be a little proactive and look at it before winter you know keep in mind that this stuff is all outside and there's heating and cooling and weather and all sorts of nastiness so 
There you go. I really hope that helps you. Um, I, uh, if you don't weatherproof your connections and you have to tear an antenna down in the middle of winter, I can really feel your pain. But uh, in a nutshell, if you watch this video, you were warned. So good luck and uh, have a great day. Take it easy.